Hey everyone, I'm Ian Norman from Lonely Spec, and this is the Rokinon AF 18mm f2.8 lens. This lens is significant because it's a competitive alternative to one of our favorite lenses, the Zeiss Battis 18mm f2.8. Now obviously this is a budget lens, it's many times cheaper than the Zeiss counterpart, and it feels cheaper. It's got a plastic barrel and a plastic lens hood that really just kind of feel lightweight and cheap. The lens hood in particular is, is very, very thin and has kind of sharp edges on it, um, and that sort of cheapens the feel of the lens. Other than that, uh, fit and finish is pretty good. It definitely feels like an upgrade from some of the older manual focus Rokinon lens designs. And Rokinon Sam Yang has only been producing autofocus lenses for a few years now, and this lens definitely feels like it was sort of reverse engineered in terms of the AF. Now, AF performance for stills is just fine. Um, it definitely focuses accurately and relatively quickly, and mostly silently. But AF performance for video is pretty much terrible. It sort of racks back and forth really, really quickly in AF continuous mode, and that makes a sort of buzzing sound. So if you're looking for a lens for video, this is probably a lens to skip. Now, ultimately, the thing that we care about most is its optical performance for astrophotography. So we're out here at the Mojave National Preserve, and we're going to compare the Rokinon 18mm f2.8 to its closest and much more expensive competitor, the Zeiss Battis 18mm f2.8. So let's see how they perform. Mojave National Preserve is a hidden gem in the California desert. We arrived there in the late afternoon and we took a short hike up the slopes of Kelso Dunes with our pajama-wearing dog, Tiger. You're such a good boy. We had some pretty heavy cloud cover during sunset and into the early hours of the night. So we warmed up in our camper van and waited for the clouds to clear before heading back out. The Mojave National Preserve has some of the darkest skies in the state of California, which makes it a perfect location for shooting the night sky. For our first wide open comparison between the Rokinon and the Zeiss, it's obvious that the Rokinon is not nearly as sharp at f2.8. Once we stop down both lenses to f4, the difference in sharpness is not nearly as drastic, but it's clear that the Zeiss is the winner here in terms of sharpness. If we look at the corners of the same photo at f2.8, aberration performance of both lenses is really good. Neither lens has very strong coma or astigmatism issues, with the Zeiss looking just a tad sharper. It's also notable that the Rokinon looks a little darker here, indicating that it performs a little bit worse in terms of vignetting. At f4, both lenses show nearly flawless aberration performance, and the Rokinon looks nearly identical to the Zeiss. While it's certainly less sharp than the Zeiss, I'm actually really happy with the performance of the Rokinon 18mm. Its aberration performance and sharpness is overall pretty good, especially when considering that it's nearly one-third the price of the Zeiss. One of my favorite shots with the lens was a mosaic of nine photos to create a hyper-wide angle panorama of the outer Milky Way arching above our camper van. Overall, I really enjoyed shooting astrophotography with the Rokinon 18mm. Considering its performance at night, its size, and price, it seems like a great budget, ultra-wide option for Sony shooters who expect to primarily use the lens for stills photography. I hope you enjoyed this quick review of the Rokinon 18mm lens. If you did, give it a thumbs up. To see more astrophotography videos, please subscribe and check out all of our gear reviews, tutorials, and inspiration on LonelySpec.com.